Hi there. Thanks for taking time out to join me, Glenn Morgan, on the read option. Now, if you're watching this show, you're probably either a huge college football fan, family, or somewhere along the way I convinced you this would be a good idea. Well, whatever the reason or reasons, thanks for being a part of this kickoff show. Now, currently in today's game, the read option is one of college football's most versatile offensive play schemes. Now, it allows teams the ability to be able to be unconventional with their play calling, aggressive in how they attack the defenses, and also unpredictable in their execution. All of which are qualities that I want for this show. To be unconventional with its presentations, aggressive with its ideas and opinions, and just flat out unpredictable at times. So, why don't we let Coach Morgan here give you some options on how to read the collegiate landscape. All right, first up, let's take a look at my top 15. Yeah, that's right, I said top 15. Who cares about the top 25? Look, if you're not in the top 15 by midseason, you're not going to be playing for the national championship anyway. So all that really matters are these 15 teams. What we're going to do here is we're going to compare the AP poll with my top 15. You're going to notice some differences, and you're also going to see where we kind of agree on some teams as well. All right, so there you have it. The AP poll, they're 15, along with the Morgan 15. All right, I want to take a closer look at 15 through 11 from my poll. Now, as we do this, you're going to see some key players, and you're also going to see some of the key games on those teams' schedule as they make their push towards the BCS. All right, now, of these five, I think Oklahoma's probably going to be the one team that falls out of my top 15. Why? Well, unproven play at quarterback is not a proven passer among the bunch. Also, a lot of inexperienced players. Now, the coaching staff, they've got a great challenge ahead of them. Now, Bob Stoops has been there for 15 years. He's won one national championship at Oklahoma, so the pedigree is there. This is their chance to prove that the coaching staff is well worth his weight in gold. Texas, however, is the one team, I think, from this five, this lower five in the 15, that has a great opportunity to actually maybe sneak into the BCS title. Coach Mack Brown also has a national championship under his belt, and these players at Texas, I mean, they've been winning recruiting wars for the last several years. A lot of talented players, some great experience. I think Texas is a team that no one's talking about, that everyone should be worried about. Next up, the race for the Heisman. That's right, you can't talk about college football without talking about his most prestigious award. Now, last year, Johnny Manziel won the award. This year, he's back to see if he can duplicate that. I don't think it's happening, Johnny. But anyway, let's get to my top 10. Those are my top 10, but that's way too easy. I'm going to give you my top three, and also a dark horse. At number three, A.J. McCarron, quarterback for the Crimson Tide. Now, Bama's coming off back-to-back -back national championships, and A.J. McCarron's been the quarterback for both of those. Going into his senior year, he is odds-on favorite to be one of the Heisman hopefuls. Now, A.J. completed over 71% of his passes last year, leading the entire country in passing efficiency also had 30 touchdown passes and only three picks. This young man knows how to win and knows how to get it done at the nation's number one team. Number two, Taj Boyd, quarterback, Clemson Tigers. Now, Chad Morris is the offensive coordinator here at Clemson, and he has this offense humming, and his trigger man is Taj Boyd. Over the past two seasons, Taj has passed for over 3,500 yards, and last year he was the ACC Player of the Year. Boyd is already Clemson's second career passer, and he is my number two Heisman contender. My number one choice for the Heisman, <laughs> it's not Johnny Manziel. No, Johnny football, you're not on my list, buddy. Teddy ball game, Teddy Bridgewater, you are. Louisville quarterback, Teddy Bridgewater, may be the number one draft pick going into the NFL next year. Bridgewater also has two great targets to throw to in Devontae Parker and Damian Copeland. Not only that, but Louisville's schedule, they're not playing anybody. So he'll be able to put up big time numbers, have big time win, and being that Louisville is one of my top 10 teams, they're also be in position to compete for the national title. All those things are definitely gonna be contributors to Teddy Bridgewater being my Heisman choice for 2014. Those are my top three, but you know you need a dark horse. So let's take a look at mine. Out of University of Georgia, running back, Todd Gurley. Now, Todd Gurley last year as a true freshman had over 1,300 yards rushing and 17 touchdowns. And he ran for 6.2 yards per carry. 
and that's in the SEC, folks. He was getting it done. Now, the reason why he's a dark horse, his quarterback may take some votes from him. But Todd Gurley has all of what it takes to be a Heisman candidate for this year. All right, those are my picks for the Heisman. Now, that was a break from our top 15. So let's return and get into the meat of this countdown at number 10 with Oklahoma State. All right, the rest of this list from 10 on down to 6 reads like this. A&M, Louisville, South Carolina, and Clemson. Now, out of these five, I think Texas a and is probably going to fall far down. Johnny Manziel's got a lot hanging over his head, the offseason that he's had, and a lot of expectations at A&M. Hey, guys, you're not hunting anymore. You're the hunted. Of this five, I think Clemson, they're my dark horse to be in a national title game. The Tigers, with one of my Heisman candidates that we just talked about, Taj Boyd, has a great opportunity to lead this team where Clemson hasn't been since the early 1980s. That's right, folks. The Tigers, they may very well be in a national title game. I know, I know. Where are the remaining five, right? We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Just, just hold your breath. What I want to do here is take a moment to introduce you to a segment that I think you're going to be able to enjoy throughout the duration of these uh, shows, and that's my Sunday 7. What's the Sunday 7? Well, these are players that I think that are going to be playing on Sunday. As a matter of fact, they really have no business playing on Saturdays. These guys are men amongst boys. To Davian Clowney, 6'6", 272. This junior defensive end from South Carolina is no one to be trifled with. Yeah, that's the guy that we all remember from the Outback Bowl. That hit on the Michigan football player, yeah, it's like he took him out back because he stole something. Yeah, clown question, bro. He's definitely going to the NFL. It may very well be the NFL's number one pick for 2014. All right, and speaking of number ones, let's get back to our countdown to number one. At five, we've got Georgia. Now, they're my dark horse to be in the national title game. Oregon at number four, Stanford number three, Bama number two, and that's right, surprise, surprise, Ohio State. I'm going with the Buckeyes to be the number one team at the end of the year. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that I think that these teams are going to be playing for the national title. Right, before we start talking about who the national champion contenders are going to be as far as the two teams going to be fighting out for the title, let's take a closer look at my top five. Now, coming in at five is Georgia. The Bulldogs are an experienced team, led by their senior quarterback, Aaron Murray. This guy has done nothing but get better each and every year at the position. And he's one of the top candidates for the Heisman as well. He's not on my board at the top five, but you saw him in my top ten. Along with that, you've got great depth at running back, Todd Gurley, and he's my dark horse to win at Heisman. So right there, you've got two guys that are going to be at the tops of the offensive game. Along with that, they've got a veteran defense and a coaching staff that's hungry to prove themselves. Look for Georgia to be one of those teams down the stretch. My number four team, Oregon Ducks. It seems like the Ducks are in this conversation each and every year. Nothing but a lot of talent out there in Eugene. Headed by quarterback Marcus Mariota. This young man proved to be exceptional as a freshman. If it wasn't for the fact that Johnny Manziel won the Heisman and did what he did as a freshman, last year the nation would have been talking about this young quarterback in Oregon. Along with that, this defense, always a very finesse and fast-oriented defense, has a little more grit to them and grime to them this year. I think that grit and strength is going to be something that can push them towards the top. Climbing on up the charts at number three, Stanford Cardinal. That's right, two teams out of the Pac-12 North, Stanford and Oregon. Well, I think Stanford's going to be a little bit better than Oregon. They beat them last year because of their defense, led by senior Shane Scove. I think the Cardinal, one of the teams to definitely watch out for. Not only that, but head coach David Shaw has done an excellent job taking over for Harbaugh after he left and went to the pros. And led by Kevin Hogan, the sophomore quarterback, this team has explosion in offense, grit on defense, and the know-how to win big games. Stanford Cardinal are my pick at number three. At number two, we've got the Alabama Crimson Tide. That's right, folks. They are back once again. Back-to-back -back national champions, three out of the last four, this team knows exactly what to do to win the big games. Led by senior quarterback A.J. McCarron, also running back T.J. Yeldon, a sophomore who last year as a freshman ran for over 1,000 yards. Sophomore wide receiver Amari Cooper, who last year set an Alabama team record for touchdown receptions with 11, and the great All-American linebacker C.J. Mosley. Nick Saban knows how to prepare his players. And guess what, folks? The elephant in the room? The Alabama Crimson Tide. And my number one team, the Ohio State Buckeyes. Now, wait, wait, wait a moment. 
I, I hear a lot of talk going on and people shaking their heads and stuff. And I don't completely disagree with you. Now, Ohio State is my number one, but that's not because I necessarily believe they're the best team in the country. I believe they're in the best situation. They have a great schedule. Only two away games against teams that might actually give them some kind of competition. And that's at Northwestern and at Michigan. Their home schedule, beautiful. And their toughest games at home, Wisconsin, not as good as they used to be, new head coach, and Penn State. Bit of a mystery there, but Ohio State should be able to handle them. Now, they do have some things to worry about. A lot of inexperience on the offensive line and defensive line, but they have a great head coach in Urban Meyer. He's won two national championships at Florida. Not only that, but he's had three regular undefeated seasons with three different teams, 2004 Utes, 2009 Gators, and the 2012 Buckeyes just last year. Enough said. And these are some of my must-see games to watch. Well, there you go. Those are my top 15 for the year. Now, we've thrown a lot at you this first episode. Uh, top 15, I've given you my Heisman hopefuls, and even my Sunday 7, or at least one of the players from the Sunday 7. But you know what, folks? I, I can't let you go in good faith without giving you who I believe is going to be fighting it out for the national title. My two teams, Stanford Cardinal and the Ohio State Buckeyes. That's right, no SEC team this year. They've been kings the last seven years, winning championship after championship, but this year, I'm calling for a change. I believe Ohio State, with their great schedule and lack of competition, basically, in the Big Ten, is going to give them an opportunity to be in the title game, and the Stanford Cardinal with a great defense an underrated coach, and a very efficient and effective offense are going to put them in the spotlight. So those two teams I see fighting it out for the national title. And don't ask me who's going to win. I've given you more than enough, as it is already. But I guarantee you, those two teams, they're going to be there. Most definitely. Hey, I ain't saying I'm right. I just don't think I'm wrong. I hope you enjoyed the first episode here of The Read Option. I'm Glenn Morgan, and until next time, hey, go have a cookout and enjoy some college football.